Hi everyone, welcome to this video tutorial for this basic pom-pom cat hat that you can see Melba wearing here. If you enjoy this uh, tutorial, please like, share and subscribe and hope to catch you soon. Thanks very much. Bye. Good girl. You're adorable. Yeah, you're adorable. Okay, so for this project you'll need some yarn. I'm going to use this four weight acrylic viscose wool blend. You'll need a crochet hook that corresponds to your yarn. Now, I'm actually going slightly smaller than what my yarn recommends. Um, I'm going to a four millimeter. My yarn recommends around a five millimeter, but for this project I prefer to use a slightly smaller hook. You may prefer to use a smaller hook again for your um, your ties. I prefer that my ties are slightly finer than the main part of my hat so I, I'm going to use a three millimeter for the ties that tie up under the chin. You'll need a darning needle. You may or may not need a stitch marker. I, uh, I don't necessarily need it for this project but you may find it handy. A pair of scissors to snip off your ends and a tape measure to measure the circumference of your cat's head. Okay, so for this tutorial or for this project, you'll need to know how to make a magic ring. You'll need to know how to slip stitch, how to single crochet, double crochet, how to create a chain, and then how to weave in your ends. You'll also need to make a pom-pom using either a pom-pom maker or whatever other technique you use to make your pom-poms. And then you'll need to know how to sew your pom-pom onto your hat. Okay. So but just before we move on, a couple of notes on sizing. So I've made here a small and a medium. And on camera today, I'm going to make, it, make a large. Now, to give you an example of how to size this, Melba's... Uh, head circumference is around 30 centimeters. So the small fits her perfectly, but it's a little bit tight for her taste. Okay, so she's not a big cat. She's actually probably a small to medium sized cat. So if your cat's um, head circumference is less than 30 centimeters, then you'd probably be looking at a small. This one here is the medium, and it fits a little bit large on Melba, but it's much more comfortable for her. So she tolerates this one, and she will leave this one on, because it's not tight-fitting around her head. This one is the exact fit, but it's a bit too tight for her. So she doesn't like it against her head. It's a little bit too tight-fitting. Okay, now it's, it's really difficult for me to give you the exact sizing that you'll need, um, kind of use, if you can, use Melba as a guide. So the 30 centimeter head circumference, the medium fits her loosely but comfortably. The small fits her perfectly, but it's she doesn't really tolerate it on her head. I'm going to make a large today, so that's going to be too big for Melba. But if your cat's head circumference is greater than 30 centimeters, I would almost say for sure you're going to have to make a large. Okay, so like I said, I apologize that it's, I can't give you exact sizing. It'll depend on factors like the yarn that you use, the hook size that you use, your crochet technique. It'll depend on your cat, their personality, how things go. So um, yeah, I kind of have to leave that up to you to work out a little bit. And uh, I wish you good luck with that. But let's get started. I'm going to be making, like I said, the large size today. Okay, so to start with, we're going to make a magic ring. So if you're not sure about any of these techniques, please go to some beginner tutorials on YouTube or use any resource that you've got on hand. This is how I make my magic ring. And then you're going to chain one. Okay, so as I said before, I'm going to make a large size on camera today. 
If you're making a small size, you will insert 10 single crochets into your magic ring. A medium size, you'll insert 12 single crochets. And if you're coming along with me today making a large, you'll insert 14. So go ahead and insert your single crochets, the, the appropriate number, into your magic ring. So that's two. So you're just inserting your hook into the ring, pulling up a loop, and completing a single crochet into the loop. So go ahead and insert your number of single crochets into your magic ring, and I'll meet you back once we've completed that. Okay, so I've got my 14 single crochets into my magic ring. So you'll have either 10, 12, or 14, depending on the size. And then you'll close your loop by pulling on the tail end. This is why these magic rings are so magic, because you can pull them to close them up. And it makes a really nice, neat beginning. So sometimes you have to pull a little bit firmly to close it up nice and properly. And then you'll slip stitch to join your ring. Okay, so you can always count, and I haven't pulled that completely closed yet, I, I will do that as we move along. So just count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. So just find your first stitch, whether it's your 10th or your 12th or your 14th, and slip stitch into that first stitch. Okay, and then you can once again pull your tail end and close up that hole. Okay, so moving on, we're going to chain two and then we're going to work. Now, your chain never counts as a stitch in this project, okay? So you just ignore your chain, it's just to add height. So we're going to double crochet into every stitch. So we're going to work back into that same space that the chain has come from and add oops, two single crochets. Uh, sorry, two double crochets. I beg your pardon. The first row, single crochets. The second row, we're moving on to double crochets. So there I've chained my two. I've placed my first two double crochets back into that space where the chain has come from. And then I'm going to do that all the way around in each stitch, two double crochets all the way around until I get to the other end. So I'll meet you back here, two double crochets in each stitch all the way around. Okay, so I'm just placing my last double crochet in that row. So I've placed two double crochets in each stitch and now I'm just finding my first stitch and slip stitch to join. Okay, so I've got my first two rows here. I've got my magic ring with my single crochets in the center. Oops, excuse me, that's the camera. And then I've got my double crochet. So I've got two double crochets in each stitch. So depending on which size you're making, you'll have a different number of double crochets here. Now we're gonna move on to row three. So chain two. And now we're going to alternate. So we're gonna work, as we did with the first row, or the first row of double crochets, we're gonna work two double crochets back into that first stitch. Okay. Two double crochets. And then in the next stitch along, we're going to work just one double crochet. Next stitch along, two double crochets. And next stitch along one. So you're going to continue that alternating pattern in this row. So two, one, two, one. And go work all the way around until you come back to here. And of course we're going to slip stitch to join. So keep going and I'll meet you back at the end of row three. 
Okay, so I'm just finishing off my last double crochet. So because you're alternating, you should finish on one double crochet. And then you will slip stitch to join. Okay. So that's the end of row three. Now row four, we're going to go back to a single crochet row. And why we do that is to allow for more room for the ears. So we've got um, this, this row here that's just above the ear is a single crochet row. Okay, it just allows a little bit more room in this space for the ears. Okay, so chain one, because we're making just single crochets. And then we're going to alternate again. Okay, so place two single crochets back into that first stitch. Next stitch, single crochet. Next stitch, single crochet and next stitch two single crochets. Okay, so it's just a continuation of the row below. We're doing the alternating pattern, which is two, one, one, two, one, one, two, one, one, two. But we're just gonna do it in single crochets just to allow that extra space for the ears. So that's two, one, one, and then two. So continue round in your row four in that repeating pattern in single crochets and I will see you back here at the end of your row. Okay so I've just placed my last single crochet in that row so you should finish on just one single crochet and slip stitch to join. Okay, so we've made now this main part here of the hat, this circle part here where the pom-pom sits. So we're going to start to move on and make this, this uh, row that contains the ear holes here. Okay, so we're going to go back to double crochet. So chain two and insert one double crochet back into that same space where the chains come from. So we're just doing one double crochet here so no alternating pattern, no increase. Now so you've put your one double crochet back into that same space as where the chains come from and now you're going to start to chain for your ears. Now for a small size you will chain 16. For the medium size you will chain 18. And for this larger size, like I'm doing today, you will chain 20. Okay, so make your chain 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. And now to create the ear hole, we're going to have to skip some stitches. So for the small, you will skip 10 stitches. For the medium, you will skip 12 stitches. And for the large, we're going to skip 14. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Okay, and then we're going to double crochet into that 15th stitch. Okay, so double crocheted into that, so I've skipped 14, into the next stitch, stitch along, I've placed a double crochet. And then we're going to place nine more double crochets for a total of 10. So that's one, two, three. No matter what size you're making, you're putting 10 double crochets at this point. Four, five, oops, five, six, seven, and eight. Nine, 
and 10. Okay, so let's just double check that. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And now we're going to make the opposite side ear hole. So you'll chain once again 20. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, and twenty. So, of course, if you're making a small or a medium, you will have chained uh, sixteen or eighteen, respectively. Now, because we're making the large, we skip fourteen. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and then in that fifteenth stitch. A double crochet so for uh, small you will have skipped 10 for medium you will have skipped 12 so there's the nice so you want nice wide ear holes okay so for your cat the cat cat's ears are super sensitive okay so you want them to be able to move okay um, you don't want them to feel restricted in the ear ear area at all so for you make a nice big ear space and then you're just going to finish this row with double crochets, just one in each, in each stitch, no matter what size you're making. Okay, so keep going and I'll meet you at the end of the row. Okay, and so I'm slip stitching into that first double crochet to join. And then we're moving on to the next row. So we've done one, two, three, four, five. We're moving on to row six, chain two. And then we're just going to work a double crochet into each stitch, okay? And now when you're working along the chain, you'll just, of course, work one double crochet into each of the chains. So find your first chain and sometimes the the first chain is not super obvious so just make sure you get each of those chains and just work one double crochet in each of your chains and then you'll continue all the way around double one double crochet in this area here double crochet one in each chain and then you'll come back to this area here so I'll meet you when we get back to back at the end of row six okay so I'm just placing my last double crochet in that row and slip stitch to join okay so we've got one row left so we're going to here make um, this final row, which is single crochet edge, and into that edge we're going to incorporate the ties. Okay. So at this point, you this is where you might want your stitch marker or stitch markers. So you will fold. You can just count. So then they're, they're not they're not vital. But you want the the ties to be in the middle of the ear holes. Okay, so you could, if you want to, you could mark that, mark that space, the, the center of the ear hole. So you could mark that stitch. And then, so that will be where your, where your um, tie starts from. If, if you just want to count, you will just count, so you'll count from the edge of the ear hole here. Okay, so if you've chained 20 in this case, you would um, place start your start your ties at chain 10. So obviously you don't count that first stitch. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So it comes to the same space. Okay, so you don't need to use the stitch marker. But if it helps you, then, then please do. And if you have a second stitch marker, you could place it in this other side now. Or you can just remove this one and, and switch it over to that side when you, when you get there. Okay, so this is a single crochet row. So we'll just chain one. And then we'll 
single crochet as we have been doing back into that so the chain again doesn't start doesn't count as a stitch so you'll you'll um, you'll single crochet back into that same space and then just single crochet all the way along to create the edge of the hat and also to incorporate the ties so once you come up one more here once you come up to this space you can remove your stitch marker place your single crochet into that stitch and here's where you have the option to change hook size and I, I do I prefer like I said slightly finer ties so I'm just going to change my hook here down to a three millimeter and then I'm going to start to make a chain to chain for the ties. Now for these ones here, the medium and the small that I've previously made, I've chained 60. And that's just a, quite an arbitrary number. You could chain longer, you could chain a little bit shorter. I like to have enough that I can put it under Melba's chin and tie a little bow. So if you want to be able to tie a bow, um, at least 60 you're going to need and for a larger cat you might need maybe closer to 80 but um, 60 is kind of your starting point so for this one I'm going to chain 80 because it's a large size like I said for these these past two I've chained 60 okay minimum 60 I think if you went um, less than 60 for any of the sizes you it would be too too short so unless you just want to just short little ties that you can just tie a little knot in. So I'm going to chain my 80. So let's just start that off. One, two, three, four. And so you chain the amount that you want to chain for your tie length. And I'll meet you back at the end of my chain. Okay, so I've chained my 80. And I'm actually looking at this and I think that it's going to be slightly too long. So I'm going to take away 5 and just chain um, 75. 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So it doesn't really matter how, how many you chain, as long as you obviously chain the same amount for each side. So I'm going to, this is 75 that I've chained. And now I'm just going to slip stitch all the way down, starting with the second chain from the hook. I'm just going to slip stitch all the way along my chain so you go ahead and, and do that and I'll meet you down at the base of your chain okay I'm just placing my last slip stitch into this first tie and then I'm going to change my hook back to my four millimeter and then you want to double, uh, sorry, you want to double the stitches is what I was going to say. But you want to single crochet back into that same space that was marked. So you're, you're anchoring the, um, let's just redo that. I think I've missed, the, missed one of the strands of the yarn. So you want to single crochet back into the same stitch that your tie was worked from. Okay, and then you'll single crochet. Now at this point, you can do the, the marking again. You can mark the other side with your stitch marker here. Or you can just count. You know, either way is fine. And then you'll just continue with your single crochets up until that next mark and you'll create your second tie so keep going with your single crochets around the the border of your your hat and create your second tie at your marked point so obviously just chaining the same amount as you did for the first tie slip stitching down to create your tie and then single crochet all the way back to the beginning of that row 
and that will finish our last our last row and then all we've got to do is weave in our ends and create our pom-pom so I'll meet you back at this point here okay so I'm just finishing my last single crochet here now don't don't pull through, don't yarn over and pull through here just pull the length of your of your yarn so we'll just finish off this nice and neatly with an invisible stitch and I didn't mention that in the techniques before but you can just yarn over and pull through if you want to otherwise you can do this invisible stitch so take your your darning needle and we'll just finish this off nice and neatly so thread your needle so just a reminder you haven't yarned over and pulled through you've just pulled out a length of your yarn now find your your first stitch and hopefully you can see with this with this darker yarn so you'll place your your needle underneath the two loops in your first stitch okay and then you'll bring it back and you'll place the yarn and the needle through the center of your last stitch so it's basically like you're creating a stitch and you'll see that you can't see where the stitch is so you don't want to pull it too tight obviously if you pull it too tight it'll be easy to see but that's an invisible stitch okay so or like you're finishing with the stitch and then you'll just weave in this tail at the back here so you've finished that off nice and neatly but like I said if you don't want to do that or it's a bit tricky you can just yarn over pull through snip your yarn and then just weave in your end as you normally would I just like to make those nice neat those nice neat finishes and then just go backwards and forwards a little with this one it's probably a good idea just to make sure it's nice and secure and snip off your excess and then of course you will weave in your starting end here and you will make a pom-pom so I'm not going to make my pom-pom on camera I'm going to leave you to make your your pom-pom off camera as well I'm going to like I said at the beginning I'm going to use the the clover pom-pom maker you make whatever size pom-pom you want however you want to make it please do that go ahead and do that and I'll join you back here once I've made my pom-pom and we'll sew it on together okay I'm just halfway through making my pom-pom and I just wanted to mention that whatever technique you're using just make sure that when you tie through the center of the pom-pom that you leave enough length of tail to sew onto your pom-pom okay so just don't forget to do that at this point whatever whatever method you're using just remember to leave that that length of of tail that will allow you to sew onto your onto your hat okay okay so I've got my pom-pom and I'm just giving it a bit of a, a fluff up and a bit of a haircut just tidying her up a little bit okay so once again there's lots of tutorials on how to make pom-poms if you don't have a, a pom-pom maker you can create your own template you're just using some cardboard but uh, those pom-pom makers are, are super easy super simple once you get the hang of using them they create really regular lovely pom-poms but you know you still have to give it a little bit of a excuse me it's off camera you still you have to just give it a little bit of a haircut just make sure that strands are all even fluff her up and then of course you're going to sew on your pom-pom to your to your hat so you'll take your darning needle now just I haven't yet sewn in this um, 
this tail here. So just pretend I've done that. I would tend to do that before I sew on the, the pom-pom. So just thread your darning needle with one end. And I'll show you how I do it. There's no right or wrong way to do this. But what I tend to do is with one end of the tail, one, one of the tails, I put it into the side of that first single crochet row. Just into the side there. And draw down. Then I bring it back up through the center. Hopefully that shows. Through the center. And I go right through the pom-pom. So I like to make them nice and secure by going through the pom-pom. You don't have to go through the pom-pom, but I like to do it that way. Like I said, there's no right or wrong way to do this. But just make sure that when you go back down into the pom-pom, you don't go too far away from where you've come up. Otherwise, you'll, you'll misshape your pom-pom. So I'm just going to go back down. And you need a relatively sharp darning needle for this. And then I'm just going to go back down through the center and that's that side finished and then I'm going to do the same on the other side just working down the other side of that of that first row so I worked into one side now I'm going to take my second tail in end and work in the other side of this first row so coming down, coming back up the center into my pom-pom and then back down and through the center. And then that's done. So what I do then with these, these two tails of the pom-pom, I tie a double knot. So I finish with the two the two ends close together, tie with a double knot, and then I'm going to go and weave in all, all my tail ends. So I'll do that off camera, and I'll come back just to finish off. So I've got three tail ends here. Like I said, I would have normally woven this one in, which was my beginning end, before I, I sewed the pom-pom, but it, it doesn't matter. You can do all your tail ends at the end. It's all good. So uh, I'll meet you back here once I've sewn in my tail ends. Okay, so I've sewn in my, or woven in my ends, and I'll just, oh, I'll just snip off those excess ends, and there you're finished. So this is the larger size. And as you can see, on this larger size, there's plenty of room for the, the ears. This actually could probably work quite well for a dog. And there's the medium and the small. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. We would love to, as always, see photos of your cat wearing his or her basic pom-pom hat. So send those along. You can either send them through email, catventurous.community at gmail.com or you can tag us on social media. We're on Facebook as well as Instagram. You can tag at catventurous.crochet or you can tag at adventurepussmelba. You can also tag Melba if you would like to. We would, like I said, love to see those, see those photos. It gives us great pleasure to see your cat wearing his or her crochet items. So, uh, yeah. Hope to catch you soon. Hope you enjoy this tutorial. We'd, again, he, put your comments below. Let us know what you think. And uh, yeah, catch you soon. Okay, bye. <laughs> Look how cute you look, Melba. Look how cute you look. There's your ears. <laughs> ah, yeah. Not easy to get a cat to wear a hat. Hi baby. Hi everyone, welcome to this video tutorial for this basic pom-pom cat hat. 
<laughs> that you can see Melba wearing here. <laughs> oh, Riri, you're so cute. Hi, sweet pea. Hi everyone, welcome to this video tutorial for this basic pom-pom cat hat. Uh, hope you enjoy this tutorial. Please like, share and subscribe and hope to catch you soon. Thanks very much. Bye. Good girl. Good girl.